Hi, I'm Mark Davies. In this video, we'll be discussing how the corpora from EnglishCorpora.org can be used for language learning and teaching. And most of the features that we'll be discussing are not available from any other corpus website. First, however, we should recognize that the corpora from EnglishCorpora.org are by far the most widely used corpora for language learning and teaching, with more than 85,000 unique users each month. Evidence for the importance of these corpora is found in the fact that nearly every book on corpora and language teaching that has been published in the last 10 to 15 years has focused on the corpora from EnglishCorpora.org. In fact, in a recent 2023 book on teaching English with corpora, which had more than 50 authors, the corpora from EnglishCorpora.org formed the backbone of the 49 chapters. This was much more than any other set of corpora, in fact, six times as much as any other corpora. There are 17 corpora at EnglishCorpora.org. By far, the most widely used of these corpora, and thus the most widely used online corpus anywhere, is COCA, the Corpus of Contemporary American English. COCA is composed of more than 1 billion words of data in genres ranging from very informal, for example, spoken and also TV and movie scripts, to formal, such as academic. Each of the eight genres has between 120 and 130 million words of data. There are many, many ways in which these corpora, and especially COCA, can be used for language learning and teaching. In this video, we'll focus on just 10 of these. And again, so that we don't need to mention it every time, almost all of these features are only found in the corpora from EnglishCorpora.org. They're not found anywhere else. A big part of sounding native-like in a foreign language is knowing whether a word or phrase or grammatical construction sounds formal or informal, and you can easily see this with COCA. For example, the word seldom is used much more in formal genres than in informal genres. And you can easily compare two ways of saying something. For example, lots of noun is used much more in informal English, like TV and movie subtitles and spoken, whereas several noun is used more in formal genres, like academic. One of the hardest things for a non-native speaker is having a good sense of which words sound the best together. For example, suppose that you're writing a paper and you want to use just the right word related to the concept of powerful or potent with the word argument. A simple search equals potent argument can show you the results and you can even see the results by genre. This would let you know that the most common phrases would be strong argument, convincing argument, powerful argument, or persuasive argument. And of course, from any results page, you can click on the word or phrase to see it in context and you can even get more context if you want up to about 200 words of context. Collocates are nearby words 
and they often provide great insight into meaning and usage, which goes way beyond what you'd see in a dictionary. For example, the following is the definition of sprawl from dictionary.com, and it's probably not too helpful. A Google image search paints a nice picture of what sprawl is. And in the corpus, you can see that collocates or nearby words of sprawl include pollution, congestion, rampant, ugly, and reduce, and fight, all of which suggest that sprawl is viewed pretty negatively. You can also find topics, which are words that co-occur anywhere in the text. For example, these are the collocates of dinosaur, and these are the topics. You can also compare collocates to tease out differences between words. For example, these are the collocates of utter and complete. Note that the collocates of utter on the left are much more negative. And these are the collocates of dirt and soil. Words don't occur in isolation. They occur as part of a pattern of words and phrases, and concordance lines allow us to examine these patterns. For example, these are the concordance lines of the verb fathom. Notice that the word is almost always preceded by a negative word. That's why it sounds fine to say, I can't possibly fathom what they might have been thinking, but it would sound very strange to say, yeah, dude, I totally fathom what you're saying. For each of the top 60,000 words in the corpus, which is pretty much every word you'll encounter, you can see an incredibly wide range of information, including definitions, images, videos, translations, synonyms, collocates, topics, word clusters, and concordance lines. And you can click on pretty much any word to take you to a detailed page with information on that related word. You can also save words to a favorites list and then categorize these words, such as words related to biology or cars or a particular class of verbs. You can also browse through the top 60,000 words in the corpus. This is like a dictionary on steroids, and it's great for language learners and teachers. You can search for words by word form, part of speech, frequency range, synonyms, and even pronunciation, and even definition. For example, suppose you want to compare synonyms of harsh. You can browse through the top 60,000 words in English and see the synonyms sorted by frequency. This way you can see that you might want to avoid a word that is hardly ever used and which might seem strange to native speakers. Or you can search for words that have sugar in the definition. or both computer and device.
Many language learners and teachers are especially interested in academic English. The Academic Vocabulary List, or AVL, is perhaps the best list of academic English words. You can browse the entire list and then see detailed information on any word in the list. You can also see the words grouped by word family with lots of information that you would never see in other lists like the academic word list. You can input entire texts such as articles that you find in web-based newspapers and magazines. You can see keywords from the text and you can click on any keyword or any word in the text to see detailed information as discussed above. You can also find other phrases that are related to any phrase in the text. By default, when you click on a word or phrase, it will show you the concordance lines. But from this page and pretty much all of the other results pages, you can click on other links, links that will take you to a wide range of external resources. Including web search, image search, videos, Google Books, and translations. You can also use links to external resources from the Keyword in Context page, such as hearing the line pronounced, is the odd one out on this list, but some of us have a soft spot for teen movies, and this one is pretty delicious, or seeing a translation, or getting information on any other word in the line. One of the problems that learners sometimes have had with Corpora in the past is that they're overwhelmed by all of the other words that they don't recognize on the Keyword in Context page. But with all of the helpful tools at EnglishCorpora.org, that should no longer be much of a problem. It can be overwhelming to try to learn a foreign language, and especially to get native-like insight into word meaning and usage, knowing which words go together, or finding just the right word for a particular concept. One way to acquire this knowledge is through thousands and thousands of hours interacting with the language. But corpus data can also give us some of this information, 
with just a click or two and just two or three seconds. As we've seen, there are many, many tools at EnglishCorpora.org that provide teachers and learners with amazing insights into English. And as has been mentioned, the vast majority of the tools that we've discussed here are not available anywhere else. They are only available from corpora like COCA and the other corpora from EnglishCorpora.org, which are the most widely used corpora for teaching and learning.